Hello, welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano, and on today's program, we hope to chat with the general manager of the MBTA, Steve Poftak. First, though, we'll check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy, wind-swept rain out there. It's a uh, dreary 54 degrees right now as the nor'easter continues to spin off the coast. It's going to continue throughout the afternoon. Wind and off and on showers is actually a gale warning that's in effect. Winds could exceed uh, 37 miles miles per hour. The temperature is pretty much stuck into the mid 50s. More wet, windy weather this evening, not dropping off that much, just uh, in the lower 50s. Got to start out kind of gray tomorrow. There'll be some lingering showers and drizzle, not nearly as windy tomorrow with highs into the mid 50s. Should be some clearing late tomorrow afternoon. That'll lead to a nice Sunday, partly sunny with Sunday's highs climbing up into the upper 60s, maybe 70 degrees in some locations. And look out for some spotty showers here on Columbus Day Monday, mainly in the morning, maybe some sunshine later. Still pretty mild highs Monday up in the upper 60s. Again, uh, windswept rain right now, 54 degrees here in Quincy. In the news today, Quincy police are continuing to crack down on drug dealers as part of a larger effort to stop the opioid overdose epidemic. Recently, two Dorchester men were apprehended after allegedly dealing drugs in a car. On Dysart Street, 32-year-old Jose Gonzalez has been charged with selling cocaine to 48-year-old Fred Cruz. Now, officers with the Drug Control Unit say they observed that transaction, then stopped the vehicle where they seized seven bags of cocaine along with a stun gun. Gonzalez is facing drug trafficking charges. Cruz is charged with possession and distribution. Both men were arraigned recently in Quincy District Courts. Quincy man's been indicted on charges that he assaulted a Quincy business owner and then tried to burn down his building. Dylan Handley has been accused of attacking that man at his Washington Street building in Quincy Point back in June and then returning about an hour later and tossing a Molotov cocktail into a trash barrel, charring a garage door. The police say the incident was captured on video surveillance. Hanley was indicted in Norfolk Superior Court on charges of assault and arson. Ten formerly homeless veterans will have a brand new place to live in Randolph soon. Groundbreaking ceremonies were held recently on what will be the Envision Bank Home for Veterans on Moulton Street in Randolph Center. Governor Baker joined officials from Envision Bank and Father Bills and Mainspring Homeless Shelters to kick off that project. It'll hold 10 permanent supportive housing units for formerly homeless individuals, and all of the apartments will have a preference for military veterans. The bank sold that land to Father Bills for $1 and will provide a $500,000 grant and permanent financing to support the $2.5 million project. State funding was also provided. That new home is expected to open in about a year. Well, the Quincy City Council is supporting a request from State Representative Bruce Ayers of Quincy and asking the MBTA to provide shuttle buses to and from Squantum Point Park during construction of a large new apartment complex and retail development at the North Quincy MBTA station. Councilor at large Nina Lang said that commuters are struggling to find adequate parking. You know, while I'm thrilled that Wallace has opened and it is absolutely a gorgeous station that is accessible, it does not um, take away and or address and fix the issues that are ongoing with reliability um, of the stations running, the buses, the frequency, the time that they are running, and, um, you know, frankly, just the parking itself continues to be an issue at all the stations. You know, we are getting emails constantly, getting updates about the orange line and the green line, and I understand they're doing work on those uh, lines as well, but the work in Quincy that they have been doing is still not done. It, it's far from over, and the impact right now is felt heavily still in the North Quincy area. So, you know, I'm thrilled that you guys are um, staying on top of that with them and making sure that they're being held accountable to continue to help mitigate um, essentially what's a commuting nightmare in that neighborhood right now. Um, and it does impact the rest of the folks across the city. So I'm happy to support this. I'm happy to second it. Um, and I you know, will continue to work with you guys to hold their feet to the fire. Thank you. Construction began recently on a 610-unit apartment complex with a Target store and some other retail outlets at the T-Station. Construction is already underway on a 1600-space parking garage. 
Braintree man's been charged with stealing from the Quincy Walmart recently, then shoving a female employee out of the way who confronted him. Police say 48-year-old Ronald Perry stole some Tide Pods and some other items at the store as it was closing recently, then shoved a female worker out of the way when she confronted him at the exit. Perry was arrested a short time later at the nearby Roach Brothers Market. He was charged with unarmed robbery and larceny. That worker was not seriously hurt. Young Braintree man's been charged with breaking right into a Quincy golf course recently, stealing some liquor. Police say 21-year-old Jonathan Goggin used some bolt cutters to get into the Crossing the Nines outdoor bar up at the Granite Links Golf Club at about 2 a.m. last Saturday and stole at least two bottles of alcohol. Goggin was arrested after police say they found the booze hidden under a vehicle. He faces charges including breaking and entering and larceny. And police say Goggin had an accomplice, but he fled the scene. Norfolk County Register of Deeds, Bill O'Donnell, recently delivering a clothing donation through its Suits for Success program to Inner City Weightlifting. Founded back in 2010, Inner City Weightlifting is a program designed to keep young people off the streets by using its weightlifting and gym facilities in Boston and Cambridge to create a network of support that encompasses education, job training, and employment in the field of personal training. The Suits for Success program is designed to help men and women reach economic independence and personal self-fulfillment by providing quality clothing for job interviews and other major life events. That program is now 10 years old. But now that you're up to date with weather and news, let's check out our programming lineup for you for later on today here on Quincy Access Television. It'll start with a replay of this program currently in Quincy today at 5 o'clock. Sound advice at 5.30 with attorney Tom Williams. Hello folks, I'm attorney Tom Williams and welcome to Sound Advice. The All Friends Cabaret at 6 p.m. Christine Cheever and her guests, Jamie Sierra and Sophia Marietta. At 6.30, the recent City of Presidents 5K Road Race. The Call, say it, believe it, and receive your miracle. Tonight at seven on Channel 8. Hi everybody. Yeah, 8 o'clock, the North Quincy High, Quincy High girls soccer game from September 28th. In the know, tonight at 9.35, the topic is the Quincy Lead Abatement Program. Yeah, I do, man. At 10 o'clock, the Beacon Street Band performance at last weekend's open house right here at QATV. And it's Democracy Now! tonight at 11 on Channel 8. Watch Channel 9 every day. You'll learn about Quincy City Department's different committee activities. Starts at 5.30. It's the next edition of Quincy In Focus. All about the fall season on Update DPW tonight at 6 on Channel 9. 6.30 FYI with the Quincy Health Department. Tonight's topic, Non-24. State View with State Senator John Keenan of Quincy at 7 o'clock. 7.30, we have a conversation with Quincy Councilor at Large and Mahoney. Phyllis Andrade. The award ceremony from this year's Quincy Arts Fest, 8 o'clock tonight on Channel 9. 8.30, it's a brand new look back at the Quincy Fire Department. See some pictures you've never seen before. And find out what's happening at your library for the rest of October at 9 o'clock. Welcome to At Your Library. Get a complete program schedule over on our website. Just go to QATV.org. When you get there, click on Program Schedule. And as always, we'd like to ask you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Don't forget, too, you can check out our weekly ad in the Quincy Sun. Coming up, we take a look at just a few of the current events and activities that are featured on our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for your information. Please stay tuned. We're back with you in just one minute.
Welcome back. Here is a check of some of the current events and activities we're showing on our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for your information. Quincy Farmers Market still open on Fridays. They're up there rain or shine, 1130 to 5 at Pageant Field right through November 22nd. You can visit their website, quincyfarmersmarket.com. Get a list of their vendors, information about the free live entertainment that's there every Friday afternoon. Eastern Nazarene College presents Titanic at the Cove Fine Arts Center opening on October 17th. You can visit brownpapertickets.com or call the box office 617-745-3715. Quincy Animal Shelter's 20th anniversary celebration called Save Them All Ball is coming up October 26th, 7 to 11 at the Terrell Room on Quarry Street. You'll enjoy a fun night of dancing, food, drinks, and prizes. Cocktail attire is encouraged. Visit QuincyAnimalShelter.org for more information. And the Quincy Lions Club's annual pancake breakfast is set for October 27th from 8 to noon in the dining room at the 1000 Southern Artery Senior Center. You can get your tickets Right at the door, everybody is invited to attend. And if you have an event or activity you'd like to promote, visit our website, qatv.org. Just download a bulletin board request form, fill it out, send it in. Get that message up here on Channel 8, too. Coming up, we have a chat with MBTA General Manager Steve Poftak. That's next. Welcome back. We're so pleased to welcome to the program for the first time, but hopefully not the last, the general manager of the MBTA, Steve Poftak, has stopped on by to chat with us about all things T and mostly here in Quincy, all things red line. So, Mr. Poftak, great to meet you and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for accepting the, uh, the invitation. I know you're still pretty new on the job, actually less than a year, right? Yes, I started actually on January 1st, uh, but I did have the benefit. I was the interim general manager for 10 weeks in 2017, and I've served on the fiscal and management control board since its inception in okay. 2015. All right, so certainly this is not a new, uh, new venture for you. No. Uh, but some might, might say, you know, um, gosh, he's putting his neck out there. Why did he agree to come in public on a live TV show and talk about what's going on with the MBTA? I, uh, this job is a privilege yeah. and uh, I love it and I, I really believe in the mission of the MBTA I know how important it is to our to communities like Quincy and I you know I want to be sure that we are improving our service and that we are providing the type of mobility that citizens need yeah in fact you took the red line here this morning right yes I did yeah, yeah. How, how was the ride the, the ride was great I um, also got to see some of the improvements that have taken place uh, we have uh, our we had our first major weekend diversion in the core of the system so the Park Street red line Park Street platform uh, looks great new lighting some painting work and there'll be more improvements to come is that the emphasis right now is kind of infrastructure uh, improvements um, you know, lighting electrical um, safety cleaning if, the, if, the, if that's part of it as well uh, yes it's, it runs the gamut okay. we're doing uh, we're doing station improvements in the core we're also replacing track in the core of the system some of which has not been replaced for 30 or 40 years wow. um, so it is a, it is a tremendous amount of work going on right now and will go on throughout the fall so what are some of the major challenges right now? What, you know, first of all, when you first took the job, um, what did you address immediately and what are you looking at as a more long-term goal? I mean, I think the biggest challenge, and it's an ongoing challenge, is to execute the capital plan. Um, and executing that capital plan requires a great deal of coordination. Um, obviously, we've asked a lot um, of our riders on the red line. Um, not only with all the, uh, the the garage closures here, but also with the uh, you know the uh, the unfortunate incident of the derailment, which yeah. took us a long time to rebound from. Um, that it is difficult to do a capital program and keep the system running at the same time. So you have to be careful about your sequencing, and obviously it does create some inconvenience for customers. We think it's worth it in the long run. Yeah, I know you've kind of taken this accelerated approach to do major station shutdowns uh, rather than you know interim overnight fixes to try yes. and make the project so quicker. Yes, and that gives us, um, particularly relevant to the red line, right. the red line in the core will be shut down um, for two weekends in November, two weekends in December. Okay. That gives us, a weekend gives us a work window of about 50 hours uh, where we get to get sustained amount of work done. Whereas if we did it just on overnights, you're only getting about, it takes you two hours to set up, two to three hours of work, 
two to three hours to, to break everything down again. It's much more efficient to get those big blocks of time. Mm. We've seen it from the highway division also in, in their accelerated bridge replacement programs, um, doing entire bridge replacements in a weekend um, and, and then reopening the roadway the following Monday. And it, it has worked out in both cases. Yes, with yeah. the accelerated bridge program, that's worked out quite well. Um, we hope to see similar benefits on the MBTA. With the core red line shut down that uh, Broadway to Kendall, how will you kind of accommodate uh, riders during the shutdown? With that shutdown, we'll be offering a bus shuttle service okay. that will replicate the route. I think one of the things that's important to talk about is the reason why the shutdown has to be so extensive is that we are replacing track and all the associated material, the ties, the we call it ballast, the gravel that goes around the track. Okay. In order to do that, you have to enter from the surface. So we have to go in either at Kendall or Broadway to get things into the core of the system. Okay. That's why you need such an extensive shutdown. How will you communicate that to riders? I mean, I think that that, I think, probably more than anything is the, what frustrates folks is when they don't know what's going on and how to deal with it. Yes, and we have done, um, right now, the, right now the, we're in the midst of, uh, we had our first orange line, core of the orange line shutdown uh, beginning last weekend. Mm -hmm. We'll go for another five weekends. We communicated that with um, st signage and stations. We use the electronic message boards. Yeah. Um, we've used social media. Okay. We had MBTA staff there at the station. Um, I took the diversion myself on Saturday morning just to sort of get a feel for it. We made some tweaks. There were okay. a couple places where we needed to make some adjustments, so we redeployed people. Um, I'll do the same on the red line, okay. obviously, to make sure that, uh, that it's easy for our customers to understand what they need to do. Do you ride the, uh, the T most every day? I do ride the T most every day. Yeah. I, um, I happen to live in the Roslindale neighborhood of Boston, oh, okay. and I, take, uh, I either take the commuter rail in uh, there, or as I did today, I take the bus to the orange line and I take it in. Okay. So yeah. I take it in, I'm out there on the system. If you see me uh, and you have any questions, please uh, please grab me and uh, feel free to share. Oh, okay. Do the employees know that you're taking the system? Uh, do they know who you are? Uh, some of them do, some yeah. of them don't. There's about 6,000 of them, I think, right? There's, so, yeah, there's yeah. over 6,000 yeah. employees. Um, so some of them do, some of them don't. Okay. I do make an effort uh, to introduce myself where I feel it's safe, yeah. obviously not you know, while an operator is driving the bus, I'm not going to introduce myself, Obviously. but after they've parked it and stopped it, I'll introduce myself. Because they're the, the folks on the front line are the ones who are really doing uh, the work that that you know that 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 our customers value, and I want to make sure that our our workforce feels valued as well. Sure. Can we talk about what's going on here in Quincy? There are four red line stations, uh, and then at the end of the line, the Braintree station also. And I know that you're touching each and every one of those stations. Yes, we have a there is a um, there is a garage construction project in in flight. Uh, they just had a groundbreaking in North Quincy. Right. Um, that will replace the number of parking spaces that were there originally okay. dedicated for the MBTA. So that that project is underway. Obviously, we had the opening of the Wollaston Station, which we're really thrilled about. I think we've gotten good feedback on that. It, I think it's been a great symbol for the rest of the system mm -hmm. that when you close something down, you can really make a difference. Um, obviously, the bus shuttles were less convenient than the red line service, so we appreciate, uh, we appreciate the customer's patience on that. Um, with Quincy Center, mm -hmm. we are preparing the site for future transit-oriented development. And with the Quincy Adams garage, uh, right now that garage is under construction. Mm -hmm. um, right now it's scheduled, I believe, the construction to be completed by the end of 2021. We are examining ways to accelerate not only that project, but also the Braintree garage project to try to pull that construction completion date in. Okay. Uh, I feel like that project's been underway for quite some time. It's obviously an, an inconvenience to lose those spots. Do you anticipate any other full station shutdowns here in Quincy or Braintree for those projects? Not for the garage projects. Okay. I think the, uh, the, the, the Quincy Center project, I think, is at such an early stage. I okay. wouldn't want to speculate on, uh, on, on what would be needed. But okay. obviously, we, a, a station shutdown is not something we take lightly. And sure. that, would be, that would be done. Uh, that would be part of a conversation with the community before the T made any decisions okay. like that. Speaking of the North Quincy station, um, as you, I'm sure you're aware that um, the representative Bruce Ayers is asking for uh, shuttle buses to Squantum Point Park, just like you provided when the Wollaston station was closed. Is that something that you'd consider? It is something we'd consider. Okay. I can't commit to it right now. I am going to go out and, uh, and, and, and visit the site to, uh, to learn more about, uh, about the community's needs and, uh, and just sort of the physical layout of it. Um, shuttle, the shuttle buses at Wollaston were not, uh, were, 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 were expensive, but I mm. think worth it. Um, I think we'd have to, you know, we'd still have to see how the Squantum Point um, 
how a quantum point shuttle would pencil out for us. Okay, so but you'd be open to exploring it at least. To yes, we'll uh, we'll absolutely take a look at it. Again, sure. we can't commit. Okay, uh, can't commit to doing it. Darn, but, uh, I thought I could get you to nail it down will, right here uh, today. <laughs> but I'm I'm happy to listen, and okay. I, you know I value you know I value the input of, sure. uh, of of our stakeholders here. Something that folks will see soon is uh, some new cars on the red line. Yes, they we came this week, right? We took delivery this week. Yeah, let's show some folks some pictures. Pilot while telling car. us about them. Yeah, good. We uh, we took delivery of the first pilot car, okay. and we expect to have cars in service starting the in the the spring of 2020. Okay. So, so what we're seeing here is a pilot car. What is that? This is a pilot car. This was a car that was constructed over uh, over at the factory in China. Okay. Future cars will be partially constructed in China. They will come over here to the production facility in Springfield, okay. where they will be where they will be fully assembled. Um, so this one will be used for testing, and then we'll be starting. We'll start to get a flow of cars from Springfield. They'll go through a testing process, and then we'll start putting them into service. Uh, right now, we're aiming for the spring of 2020. Wow! Okay. Um, and I've had the experience. These cars are similar to, or though not not in interchangeable with the new Orange Line cars, mm. which are already in service. I've had the opportunity to to ride that a number of times, mm -hmm. and those have been very well received. I, you, you don't typically see people taking selfies with uh, <laughs> a MBTA subway car in the background. Well, it's been so long. <laughs> it, uh, it, and it has. Yeah. Honestly, it is, it is. We are going from an 8-track tape player to, you know, whatever, Spotify, or, you, know, some, you know, really the latest technology. So these cars are very advanced uh, in terms of the data that we get from them, and it's going to allow us to manage the fleet in a lot more proactive way. So we're really excited uh, for our customers to have a great experience yeah. and to provide a much higher level of reliability and a higher level of capacity once we get all the cars on site. Really? Okay. So there'll, there'll be more trips basically per mile? Is that what you're aiming at? Yes. We'll okay. be able to run these cars in, in rough terms. These cars uh, accelerate faster. They brake quicker. You can run them. You can run more Train, you can run more trains on the track Closer so you can so provide yeah. more capacity. Okay. So I think this is going to be a real upgrade in service for customers. Again, you're not going to get that full, you're not going to get the full benefit of the new cars until 2023 mm -hmm. because it's going to take that long to get them all into service, do the signal work that underlays part of the gain in capacity and the type of other ancillary work, power, maintenance facilities, uh, but once we get everything in place, it will be a significant upgrade in okay. service. So eventually all the red line cars are being replaced? We are going to replace all the red line cars, and we're going to actually add to the fleet as oh, well. Okay. All told between the red and orange line, uh, it's where we'll be taking delivery of 404 cars. Okay. The uh, cars that are existing now in the red line, how old are they? Uh, some of them, uh, you know, some of them are upwards of, you know, a 1970s vintage, okay. some of them are from the 80s, and some are from the early 90s. And what was their lifespan that has now gone past, obviously? You know, to the, to the FTA typically says yeah. they have about a 30-year lifespan. Okay. Um, sort of the old New England adage of, you know, if you've replaced the axe handle twice and the axe head three times, is it still the same axe? Obviously, these cars get an extensive reconstruction sure. at certain periods of time. So many of the components have been replaced on these older vehicles. But we also will we'll be glad to have the new cars in service yeah. as soon as we can. You know, in a bigger picture, Steve, how did the T get to where it is today? And how are you going to prevent the deterioration from happening in the future? Well, we right now are, uh, you know, we are in the process of executing on a, a, a massive capital plan. Of Billions over, of over dollars. Eight, over $8 billion, $8 billion over the next five years. Yeah. And I should note that we have the funding identified for this. This is not an aspirational plan that we hope to fund somewhere in the future. We have the funding in hand to do this type of work. Okay. Um, I mean, I think there has been underinvestment over time. I think part of what we need to do is tie ourselves, to compel ourselves to make that investment. Mm -hmm. We are now, we are putting together a plan to offer the level of service that we want to be able to offer in 2023 to make sure that we sustain that over a 25 year period of time and that we, we understand what investments need to be made to make sure that we sustain that in investment. In broader terms, yeah. we, are, we are initiating procurements uh, for new cars for the Green Line, additional coaches for commuter rail. We're initiating those procurements now because that's the next part that we need to plan for. You know, I, I think we all devoutly wish that the red and we, that the red and orange line procurement had been done a decade ago, yeah. and that those cars were already yeah. in service. And I think have not having these laps, 
lapses in in procurement is really important. Okay, so so you're really not looking back. You're you're t you're starting today and looking forward. You're you're moving ahead on this. You're you're not yes, and fixing structural problems um, as they as they come up. You're you're trying to deal with a whole new plan. We are. Uh, we, I mean, you know, obviously we're doing the kind of routine and preventative sure. maintenance that yeah. we need to do. But I think we're also you know we're we're at the point now where we're starting to take delivery of the orange line cars. We're going to have red line cars running in the spring. That's our goal. Okay. Um, you know, we're we're at the cusp of of a, a real significant upgrade in service. So that's you know we're very excited to be able to do that for yeah, our customers. Speaking to um, one of the local uh, city officials earlier this week about this, and uh, you know we, we brought up the fact that it seems like development took a front seat before the infrastructure was you know uh, put in place to support it. It's kind of like the cart before the horse, or, or closing the barn door after the horse gets out. So now we're kind of catching up. We you know obviously we wish that some of these procurements yeah. had been done earlier, I think one of the things that's also difficult to understand is just how long these procurements take. The red and orange line cars were first, kind of the idea of the procurement first came up in 2013, 2014. The cars aren't going to be delivered in full until 2023. Right. It really takes 10 years wow. from start to finish. Okay. We just initiated a procurement for 80 new commuter rail coaches, and those coaches will start coming on property in two years, okay. which again, feels like an awful long time, yeah. but in terms of a vehicle procurement, it is you know, blazingly fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, these things are not, it's not like an automobile. It's right. not, not, there's not a lot full of There's no commuter rail dealership. You can just go down the street and pick no, one out. Yeah. No, it is a, it, it's a different, it, it, it's just a whole different cycle, uh, which I know can be frustrating for right. customers. And we want to get these things on property as fast as we can. Would you come back uh, and, and bring us up to date on the love happenings to. at the T? Absolutely love to. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. You're very welcome. Just enough time to recap the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Kind of what you see is what you get out there. Wind and rain and uh, rather cool, raw temperatures in the mid-50s. It'll continue into this evening. The nor'easter is just kind of stuck off the coast. There is a gale warning up until late tonight, by the way. Start to improve tomorrow after some morning showers. Really, the pick of the weekend is this Sunday with sun and clouds. It'll warm up to near 70 degrees, maybe a shower around. On Columbus Day, too. Thanks again going out to MBTA General Manager Steve Poptak for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks to our crew, and thank you for watching. We're off, by the way, for Columbus Day on Monday. Join us next Friday. House Majority Leader Ron Mariano is here on another live edition of Currently in Quincy. We'll see you then.